Let us open our Bible to the book of Mark 8. Mark 8. Following the Messiah. Following the Messiah. Mark 8 verses 1 to 10. 4,000 fed by a miracle. Yahshua and his disciples are still in the region of the Decapolis, which means the Ten Cities, a group of cities populated mainly by the Greek Gentiles. The cities were Greek from their founding, modeling themselves on the Greek polis or city. Before and after the conquest of the Phoenicia by Roman Emperor Pompey in 63 before Christ, the deep capolis was a region where two cultures interacted. The culture of the Greek colonists and the indigenous Israelite culture. There were some conflicts of of uh, circumcision while various elements of uh, Semitic uh, 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 descent towards the dominant and assimilative nature of uh, Hellenic, which means Greek uh, civilization, civilization culminated gradually in the face of assimilation. At the same time, there was also some cultural blending and borrowing in the Decapolis region. The cities acted as centers for the diffusion of Greek culture. Some local Canaanite deities become, began to be called by the name Zeus, the chief Greek god. Meanwhile, in some cities, Greeks began worshipping these, these local, local Zeus uh, 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 deities alongside their own Zeus Olympios. There is evidence that the Greek colonists adopted the worship of other Semitic, Semitic gods, including Phoenician deities and chiefs. Uh, Nabataean god uh, called the Dushara worshipped worshipped under uh, his Hellenized name Duzares Duzares. The worship of this Canaanite god is attested to in coins and inscriptions from the cities. Those who created the name Jesus or in particular, uh, the French Calvinist Petrus Ramus, uh, who lived there uh, from 1515 to uh, 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 1576, the 25th of August, uh, 1572. The name Jesus, which includes the, the, the name of the Greek god Zeus, no knew well what they were doing for for many evil people used the name Jesus to invoke that Greek God of the sky. Crowd after crowd formed to see and hear Yeshua in the Decapolis region. In this case a group uh, has been with him for three days. Mark doesn't even mention whether Yahshua is teaching or healing. Instead, he moves right to the compassion Yahshua feels for the people who are surely hungry after such a long time. It is where uh, it is important to notice here how these crowds, crowds of the gen, of Gentile people, just worship, uh, just worshiping people, were so touched by the teachings and healings of Yahshua to the point of forgetting to feed their own bodies. Verse four. 
the disciples are woefully short-sighted as soon as Yahshua expresses the desire to feed the crowd they immediately respond with the impossibility of finding enough bread I quote in the wilderness and I quote verse 8 the word used to indicate a basket here is not the same as the one used previously in Mark 6 verse 43 this time the reference is to a large basket made of wicker, wicker and rope used for carrying provisions. So the seven basketfuls of leftovers in this account may well have contained more than the twelve basketfuls in the previous miracle. Our Lord Yahshua encouraged the, the meanest to come, to come to Him for life and grace. Christ knows and considers our frames. The bounty of Christ is always ready to show that He repeated this miracle of food multiplication. His feathers are renewed as our wants and necessities are. And those who have Christ to live upon by faith and do so with thanksgiving do not need fear, want. Mark 8 verses 11 to 21. Yahshua cautions against the Pharisees and the Herodians. Verses 11 to 12. The sign, sign. The sign the Pharisees request it's not another healing, casting out demons, or feeding. Feeding. They want to see some kind of apocalyptic manifestation. The sun disappearing, angels appearing, or some similar sign that would prove beyond all their doubts that uh, Yahweh, that Yahshua has Yahweh's approval. Yahshua's response is likely a sin, a sign, a sign, a sign of anger because he knows they are not sincere in their request. They only want to trip him up and lessen his influence on the crowds. Yahshua did not perform miracles to perform the hot hearted. He used them to cure those in need and to show compassion to those hurt by sin. Verses 14 to 15. As Yahshua and the disciples go back across the sea, he warns them to beware of the leaven, leaven or yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. Most references to the yeast or leaven in, in the in the in the New Testament are symbolic references to evil as in Matthew if Matthew 13 verse 33 is one exception just as a little yeast changes the complete nature of Tao so too a slight influence of pharisaical pharisaical teachings could corrupt the truth of the gospel obstinate unbelief will have something to say though so ever so unreasonable christ refused to answer their demand if they do not want to be convinced they will not they will not alas what cause we have to lament to for those around us who destroy themselves and others by their perverse and obstin obstinate unbelief and en and enmity to the gospel when we forget the works of yahweh and distrust him we should shide ourselves severely as Christ here roof proves the he roof proves his disciples. How is it that we so often mistake his meaning 
disregard his warnings and distrust his providence. Mark 8 verses 22 to 26. A blind man healed. Because of where it is in the narrative, this miracle should be considered an object lesson. A physical demonstration of uh, the spiritual condition of Yahshua's disciples. Some people in Bethsaida, which means house or place of fishing, ask Yahshua to heal a blind man. Yahshua applies saliva on the man's eyes, lays his hands on him, and ask what he sees. The man's vision has improved because he can see the shapes of men, but they look like walking trees. Yahshua again places his hands on the man, and this time the man can see clearly. But this is a worldly interpretation of this passage. The Holy Spirit gave us this passage with its spiritual interpretation for our Sabbath sermon on January the 11, 2015, which we, which we entitled A Spirit of Understanding. They come to Bethsaida, the house of fishing, which means the house of fishing. Therefore, this is a fishery a place with many fishermen fishing for souls. Remember what Yahshua said to Peter. I quote, Yahshua said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. End of quote. This is in Matthew 4 verse 19. Bethsaida, the house of fishing, the place of fishing is a place with many preachers of all types of doctrines, worldly doctrines, strange doctrines, idolatrous doctrines, demonic doctrines. Too many different and conflicting doctrines make you become dumb and turn you blind. All these fishermen, strange, uh, strange preachers, came and showed Yahshua a blind man. A difficult case they, 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 they had in hand. They challenged Yahshua to touch, to touch him, for they have been unable to succeed. Their doctrines, their demons, could not make the man see like them, the way they wanted him to see. Yahshua uses four steps. First, Yahshua takes the blind man away from the town, away from the house of fishing, away from the crowds of fishermen. Yahshua could not touch him in the, in, in the midst of these fishermen and their influence. Yahshua needed to be alone with the blind man in order to touch him effectively. If the Pharisees, fishermen, were able to touch and influence his own disciples so easily, when he talks, so be careful of the, the yeast of the Pharisees, how much more these blind men in the midst of so many fishermen? Can you preach and touch a soul in a nightclub or in a satanic cult house, you need to take him out of the worldly crowd in order to touch him more effectively with the word of God, which is Christ. Second, Yahshua spit on the blind man's eyes. This is not the first time he did it. I quote, after saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Solom. This word means sent. 
So the man went and washed and came home saying, and of quote, this is quoting John 9 verses 6 to 7. Yahshua usually healed the people by speaking a word to them. Not in these cases. Wasn't his word powerful to heal this blind man? For Yahshua spoke the word and Lazarus, Lazarus walk, walked out of the tomb. Every atom in his dead body being restored as it is said in John 11 verses 38 to 44. Remember that Yahshua has the power of the Creator. I quote, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And of good. This is quoting Colossians 1 verses 15 and 16. Paul tells us that everything that exists was created by Yahshua the Messiah and for Yahshua the Messiah. That means these blind men were standing before the creator of the universe. For as Yahweh originally formed the man from the dust of the earth, so also Yahshua made mad from the dust of the earth and placed it on the man's eyes, thus recreating them. Yahweh is the one who gives a man both physical side and spiritual side. In this case also the saliva of the Creator carries to power the, the to power of body regeneration, of body restoration. The body of Christ, including his saliva, is used for healing and restoration. Three the blind man did, did not see well the first time. Is Yahshua healing through trials here? No. What the blind man saw after the first attempt is the most important. He saw people like walking trees. Trees are heights, human elevations through pride, rebellion. The beings that embody rebellion and pride are demons, giants like trees, whom the blind man saw. The blind man saw the impure spirits, the demons walking like trees. Yahshua wanted to show him and us that he can make you see in the spiritual realm. Then Yahshua touched him again and he saw in the physical realm. Fourth, Yahshua gives the man one condition, one word. I quote, don't even go into the village, end of quote. That village name is Bethsaida, the house of fishing. Yahshua tells him, stay away from the fishermen away from their baits, away of, uh, 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 of their strange teachings, away of their evil doctrines, away of their demons. If the man were to go back to that village, he would surely become blind again. To keep our deliverance, never go back to your old vomit. To keep your deliverance, Never go back to your old life of sin. To keep your deliverance, start a new life, the life of a Christ follower, in a new village. Here he is a blind man brought to Christ by his friends. The Aaron appeared the faith of those who brought him. If those who are spiritually blind 
for them, for, uh, 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 if they do not, if they do not pray for themselves, yet their friends and relations should pray for them, that Yahshua would be pleased to touch them. The cure was done gradually, which was not usual in our Lord's miracles. Christ showed in what method those who by nature are spiritually blind are commonly healed by his grace. At first their knowledge is confused, but like the light of the morning it shines more and more to the perfect day, and then they see all things clearly. Slighting Christ's favors in forfeiting them, and he will make those who do so know the worth of privileges by the want of them. This speaks to the disciples, to Christ's followers. When you are Christ's follower, don't assume you cannot backslide again. If a Christ follower associates with the wrong fishermen, he or she will surely lose sight. Also, the disciples' spiritual vision is not yet 2020. They would eventually come to see clearly who Yahshua is. Yahshua showed them that he is the only one who can give sight to those who are blind, understanding to those who are dumb, a, a soft heart to those who have a hardened heart. He tells his disciple, lie to his man, don't associate yourself and be influenced or be influenced like the Pharisees and the Herodians. Mark 8 verses 27 to 33, Peter's testimony to Christ. Verse 31, up to this point, Yahshua has been revealing the Messiah's power and authority. Here he begins to reveal his suffering role, clarifying for his followers what is involved in Yahweh's plan for the Messiah. It will involve not only suffering in the hands of others, but ultimately his death as well. Yahshua's teaching about his death his death is specific. These things are written that we may believe that Yahshua is the Christ, the Son of Yahweh. These miracles of our Lord assure us that he was not conquered, but a conqueror. Now the disciples are convinced that Yahshua is the Christ. They may bear to hear of his sufferings, of which Christ here begins to give them notice. He sees that a miss in what we see, in what, he, we, in what we say and do, of which we ourselves are not aware, and knows what manner of spirit we are of, when we ourselves do not. The wisdom of man is folly when it pretends to limit the divine counsels. Peter did not rightly understand the nature of Christ's kingdom. Matthew 8 verses 34 to 38, Christ must be followed. Verses 34 to 37, to deny oneself is not a call for asceticism, self-rejection, or self-hatred, Rather, it is to replace the desires of self with the will, the will of Yahweh. To set aside all personal rights and live for the glory of Yahweh and the mission of extending his kingdom. Yahshua challenges his listeners to think of long-term effects of the daily choices. Everyone either lives for self or lives for Yahweh. For when you live for the others taking care of them, you live for Yahweh. While living for self, 
will have certain benefits none come close to eternal life with a loving Yahweh verse 38 living for Yahshua includes speaking up for him even when uh, persecuted by a sinful and adulterous generation frequent notice is taken of the great flocking there the, the, the great flocking there was uh, to Christ uh, for help in various cases all are concerned to know this if they expect him to heal their souls they must not indulge the case they, they must not indulge the, the ease of the body as the happiness of heaven with Christ is enough to make up for the loss of life itself for him so the gain of all the world in sin will not make up the ruin of the soul by sin and there is a day coming when the cause of Christ will appear as glorious as some now think it as some now think it mean and uh, contemptible may we think of that season and view every earthly object as we shall do at that great day know this 